Hi everyone! I have been asked if I can colour some pictures from Botanicum by Maria Trolle and um, the person who asked said um, I could, you know, maybe a bouquet. So I picked this one quite near the front of the book. Um, it's quite a simple one which was rather nice. So we've only got three different types of flowers so I thought that would make it a little easier. I've grabbed my um, Castle Arts um, soft touch pencils to have a go. Um, I need to just pop some paper behind the page. Now normally when I'm colouring a picture this near to the front of a book, I would put another book under the cover to sort of support the page as it were, um, so that when you press down here you've got something to lean on. But because this is a hardback book, it's actually quite, gives itself quite a lot of support. So I'm not going to worry about that. Now I've looked up these flowers, um, Maria always lists in the back of the book, I think with the exception of maybe her first book, what the flowers are. So we have these which are the bleeding hearts, these, I can't remember what they're called but they're blue, they're not quite forget-me-nots but they're blue similar and blue with a little white middle and these are a type of tulip called ballerina which are sort of orangey. So I'm going to colour in those colours but I haven't got photographs or anything to go by. I just thought that I would just do them as similar as I could really. Now we're going to start with the bleeding hearts. Um, I've got some of these in my garden at the moment but not this precise one. Um, I was looking at the the pictures of these. Um, I looked up some pictures and this one is particularly dark. Um, this little piece coming out isn't white like mine, it's um, pink. So I'm going to do this in two shades of pink. I'm not going to do it quite as dark as it actually is, um, particularly not to start with. So I'm going to use the grenadine pink for all of the um, sort of top hearts and I'm just going to work through colouring them all with just a layer of the grenadine to start with. This is really blunt. Um, let's just find my sharpener. And then we're going to add a little bit of deeper pink, I think I've broken, no I haven't, um, onto them after. So there are different techniques to um, adding layers of colour and um, I vary in what I use. Um, today I'm in the mood for putting down a sort of layer fairly even layer. Um, I'm quite far away but because we've got a lot in shot I can't really get any closer but I'm sure it's good enough for you to see um, at the minute anyway. Um, so I'm just putting down a reasonably even layer of the grenadine pink and then I'm going to um, add a darker colour in some areas. Now the actual plant is almost a ready pink um, I would, if I was using my polychromos, you know, I would say it would be like a pink carmine, um, something like that, but um, I'm not I'm using castles and this colour just sort of jumped out at me really. I've got my swatch chart in front of me. Um, if you don't have castles, I do have some comparison charts on my Kofi. Um, I'll try and remember to include the links in the description for you. So I've got comparison charts with Castle and other main brands. Um, only brands that I've got, of course, um, you know, I can't compare to brands I don't have. But um, things like, um, I think I've got Polys and Prisms, but I can't actually remember. But um, all there for you, so that if you don't have this brand, you can do that um, comparison and get your next nearest match. I know some of you would just know instinctively what colour would work but not everybody does. Um, I didn't used to, I sort of do now. Um, uh, it, I'm not always 100% accurate but it doesn't matter um, and I'm sort of confident enough to just grab and go but I know that's not the case for everybody. Um, if you want to try and get the nearest match then those charts are there for you and of course you may not completely agree with my decision um, it's not always easy. Sometimes there are some, you can't find a close match and you're like, which way do I go or whatever. But I do, I do my best and only for a few have I done sort of blends to match. With these sets, it's okay. You can usually find a fairly close match. But when I was trying to match to Derwent um, drawing pencils, they are such unique colours that I just couldn't find a match. So I had to blend to get matches, which... Um, was was fun. It meant I could get a much more accurate match, but 
I wouldn't normally do it if there was only one or two that I couldn't match but there were so many that I just had to really and uh, I was actually watching um, Colour with Claire yesterday and she had been in touch with Derwent which I had and Derwent had some news actually regards to Derwent um, drawing pencils well they said they were bringing out some open stock pencils and she is hoping that um, some more pencils and she's hoping they're extending their Derwent drawing set because it is a lovely set of pencils I'm still learning with them to be honest because they're, they've got such thick core um, you can't get a good point I mean I know I'm not colouring with a really sharp point but they're so thick that I find them great for backgrounds because they're so smooth and smushy but if you want to get any sort of detail I'm just trying to work out what that is I think it's a bit of the um, um, sort of branch thing um, If you, you, it's just really tricky to get a you can't do detailing with them very well but they are lush pencils and I need to use them more but um, what her good news her exciting news was they're definitely bringing out open stock chroma flows for the new 50 that they've just brought out um, they told me there were no plans when I to asked them but they told her there were <laughs> so I hope um, she contacted them a bit later than me so I hope this sort of changed their mind maybe all the questioning and nagging has um, convinced them that there's a demand I'm not sure or uh, you know or maybe they just sort of changed their mind um, I don't know but anyway it's good news either way that she could uh, bring us all but this uh, it's a bit irrelevant because I'm colouring with um, colours uh, with um soft touch castle pencils but you know um it is it is fun most of us have more than one set of pencils okay there's my initial layer done as i um chatted on and what i'm going to grab now is the cherry pink i think this is it nope sorry bear with me my pencil's a bit higgledy biggledy no where is it is it down here i think it's here no, that's the purple light. Where is it? It's lost. No, there it is. Oh, I was confused because the bottom isn't that dark, but the colour is really dark. So it confused me. What I'm going to do with my cherry, I'm going to show you on a, this large one here, is where, see, there's these little lines. I'm thinking maybe this bit is darker in the middle. So I'm just going to put a darker bit there and then just sort of blend it out to the edge. Like that. Okay, I'm going to do that on all of them. It's not really um, realistic, but I think it just makes them stand out a little bit. And I'm not going for photorealism. Certainly not. <laughs> Never have. It'd be interesting. I admire it hugely. I mean, there are some pictures you look at and they just look like photographs, even if they've been coloured with pencil. I Oh, amazing but uh, no I'm just going for fun and uh, nice bright color so I'm sort of contemplating I'm it's really early on in my coloring of this picture obviously I'm just realizing that I can't see I'm just gonna put my light on um sorry I hope that's okay for you guys um I think the camera adjusts quite well anyway. It's just really dark outside all of a sudden and so I'm struggling to see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I'm contemplating background already. Now I wrote an article actually, a blog post on my Kofi about backgrounds, um, which some of you seem to find useful, which is good. I had lots of links to various videos that have backgrounds in. I've got a whole playlist on my YouTube actually of backgrounds. Um, videos they're not all like purely here's a background they're sort of you know maybe it's a series and the last one I do a background plus maybe other things so you know they they've all got a background in them if that makes sense and um it I just think sometimes backgrounds are just so daunting that it's nice to have some sort of guidance on it now basically um not all pictures need one. Now this is just a standalone bouquet. It's not really asking for a background in my opinion. You can put one in, 
but it doesn't feel like it has to have one. Whereas if I'm colouring a picture which is a scene and there's a sky or a hills or whatever, then I feel like you have to colour those in because they're part of the picture. But here, there's none. And nothing, you know, it could just pop off the page. Some pictures look better without one. So uh, I've seen many a picture ruined with a background, both by myself and other people. I know that sounds very rude, um, but people have, you know, admitted it that, you know, or I look at it and think that was better without one. Um, my husband always prefers pictures without them as well. I'm going to use the Japer pink for the little bits that are coming out of our hearts. So, but the point I'm trying to make is don't feel you've always got to do one. You may have much admiration for people that do amazing backgrounds, as do I, but that doesn't mean that every picture needs one. Um, I'm trying to layer this up a bit so that it looks darker than our sort of um, whatever the other bit of this is. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> See, it's never, you know, you don't always have to do one. In um, Worlds of Wonder, I did most of, um, by Johanna Basford, I did most of my pages without backgrounds. And then when I did my flip through video, um, I got this comment from someone saying, are you going to go back to your book and put backgrounds in? Now, um, I think some people thought that person was being rude, but I didn't. I could, that was a perfectly legitimate question, but the answer was no. Um, you know, firstly, once I finish a picture and turn the page, I don't go back. I've only ever done that in one picture. Oh, there's a little bit here that I missed. Um, I've only ever done that once. I like to, if I feel that when I look back in six months' time, that should have had a background, that's fine. I don't put one in. I just think, well, next time, you know, I'll learn something from this and I'll leave it so I remember and learn, you know. That's how I do it with my pictures. I don't go back and rework them very often at all. Right, I want that a bit darker. So I want, what should we grab? What's this colour? Is this darker? Um, I'm just looking on my swatch chart. No, that one isn't. See, look at the bottom of the pencil and it looks dark, but it's not. Um, I'm going to go for the purple. Where are you, purple? Is this the purple? No, that's the purple light. No, that's the cherry. That's too dark. Oh, I'm sorry. Being slow, finding my... Yeah, I found it right. The purple. Now, the pu you would think a purple might be a bit too dark, but I think it's just about going to work. Purple. Now, I'm going to go colour this. See, where some of these, I'm going to colour a bit where this little bit is coming out of the petal part, but also on these where you've got a few sections. I just want to put a bit in either side like it's a little bit of shadow. But here, just where it's popping out. As I say, my plant that I've got, which is in flower at the moment, um, is starting to go over to be honest. It's got very battered by all the rain. Um, it's uh, the little bits popping out of white and I think they do look nicer, but I'm not... Um, as I'm not doing a background, colouring white would not really show up. You don't have to do this little extra detail if you think it's too fiddly. You can just miss it out. I don't even know if it's that noticeable, to be honest. Now, I didn't look at the colours, the green colours, very much on the uh, plants. Um, so I'm just going to... Yeah, I think the permanent green is probably my friend here. Um, I use it a lot actually and the problem with castles I was talking about open stock in the um, in the dough once earlier I'm going to start at the top here with my permanent green can't see that there you go um, and just work my way down 
Um, the problem with castles is they don't do open stock and I've asked them lots of times um, about it and they just don't. I think because they're a budget pencil it's just not... Um, they just can't afford to do it, you know. So, but I, I don't really understand much about production lines and things like that, you know, not, not being into... I mean, I might, if when I eventually go to the Derwent Museum, I will find out more. But um, I don't really understand why they can't do separate batches. I guess it could be to do with storage and packaging as well. You know, how do you send them out how do you store them you know because these are all in a tin of you know one of each whereas if you've got separate colors you'd have to put them in boxes or something maybe you know 12 boxes of 12. I know Arteza used to do boxes of three I'm just trying to follow this stem down it seems to just disappear here so I shall ignore it and start on this one um yeah, Arteza used to do boxes of three of their expert pencils, so you could buy sort of open stock. I don't know if they still do those or not. Um, I know their um, 120 set has been out of stock for a long time. Um, they're, um, I understand from something I read that they are having to find a new manufacturer, and so um, they haven't been able to make new pencils. So I'm guessing that some of their open stock range might still be available on Amazon and some of it not. But um, one thing I love that they make, used to make that they don't anymore was a little see-through drawer set. I thought it would be so useful for all your little bits and bobs. And you could see through the front of the drawer and see what was in it. You know, it looked fabulous. But um, it's when I, I think that is a bit of stem there. When I discovered it, it was already out of stock and it has never come back in. So that's a shame. So I just got to stop and wipe my nose. And then I'm going to do the last little bit here. And I'm going to try and work out which stem belongs to which in the sort of bottom bouquet. Because we've obviously got a mix of stems. I just need to figure out whether any of these are in that bottom part. It's a little bit tricky because we've got this ribbon round distracting us. Um, but we'll work it out. We can always guess. There's no harm in guessing. My husband's off today. It's uh, one of his um, days off. And uh, he's wa wanting to go to the shop. I don't know whether I should go. I could, probably could do with a walk. Um, it's always good to have a walk each day, I think. Now we've got two stems going down, this one and this one. Um, let's go up a little bit so we can see what's going on. So I'm just going to have a little look. So this stem here, which I think belongs to these flowers, seems to be that one. I'm thinking that maybe... Hmm, I don't know where this one's coming from. And this one. I think I'm just going to guess. And I'm going to colour this one. And this one. Because this one's thin. And I think these are the most narrow stems we've got going on. And I think once it's all finished, it won't look so odd. And you won't be going, oh, does that match up? I mean, that could sort of cross across. You know, stems bend round. But I want to put a little bit of darker colour on the stems as well. I'm going to just come out a tad, so I'm all in shot. There we go. So what should we pick? I'm thinking this one looks quite good. Yeah, the mm, yeah I think that'll work. The chrome green. It's quite a sort of dull, dark green, but I think mixed with this it'll work. Now, what I'm going to do first is this fatter stem. Just going to go around the edge a little bit. And then... There we go. I think that looks much better. 
and then the same with this one. So I find that putting a little bit of darker colour on the edges helps to give items a little bit more shape. It looks a little bit more rounded to me. I'm going to do the same with the bits, stems coming up here. It's quite tricky to do it on all of it. I think this one I'll just do it top and bottom instead. You can just do it how you see fit, adding little bits of darker colour. I think I'm just going to do this one underneath where it might be slightly shadowed. It's uh, it's a little bit tricky with it being a bit thinner. And it's up to you. I'm just going to add little dashes of colour at the top and bottom of each little bit. And you can see it just sort of tones it down a bit from being so bright, which I like and put a bit around the edge of these on the ends sort of thing it's quite sweet this morning um i don't know if you if you're on facebook um i'm on facebook by the way both personally sometimes you send me friend requests on facebook personally but um i don't accept those but um on um, for my Rachel Henson colouring, I'm on Facebook. But on my personal Facebook, I had a memory come up today of one of my kids. They were at um, primary school, so they would have been probably I could work it out. Actually, it would have been 2012. So 2012, it's 24, 12 years ago, 19, 12. They would have been seven. Yeah. And uh, it was the Olympic torch relay. We had the Olympics in the UK. I don't know if people remember um, London 2012. And the torch, Olympic torch went visited, round, went round the country basically. And uh, it was just, it was sort of about four o'clock time when it came. So all the parents picked their kids up from school and then went out onto the streets to watch. And I have this absolutely fantastic photo of my two boys. My eldest boy, looking at the camera, extremely serious face, very, very serious face. And then my other boy, sticking his tongue out at me. <laughs> it's so sweet, so cute. Oh, and they both got their hats on. I remember it was really hot. This is Orange Lake. Going to start the tulips. So I'll bring them in. It will come a little closer. This isn't going to be just one video, but I think we can probably get a bit of these done. Now I'm going to use this orange lake over the whole thing of each tulip. Sorry, I've gone out of the lines already. <clears throat> just a layer to start with. Because um, these are... This particular tulip, it's called, as I said, it's called ballerina. It's orange and red. It's not just, it's all striped. But I'm not sure I'm going to do it quite like that. I think I'll just do some blends rather than stripes. Um, I'm a bit more confident with that. Anyway, um, it was quite funny because we stood on the street. It was a group of us, you know, sort of friends. And um, my one son had made a torch in his lesson that afternoon, you know, his art lesson. It's a sort of bit of sh ro rolled round sugar paper and uh, a bit of tissue paper for the flame type thing. And so he was waving that. And then my friend had brought a bag of little flags. So everyone had a Union Jack to wave, um, you know, the UK flag. And uh, we stood there and nattered and talked and waited and waited and waited and waited. And um, then um, eventually, um, some police bikes came down the road and they stopped by us for ages. My um, friends posed next to the policeman and uh, things like that for photos because we were all so bored. And then eventually a bus came by and on the bus were some um, radio DJs. Um, couldn't really see them. They were playing music and dancing and stuff. And yeah, when the when they went through London, there were all sorts of really. Um, famous people on it but when they were in our town I don't think they were particularly um, well known anyway and then the torch came by and the person carrying the torch was a local person which was nice um, I think it was a, a child ish a teenager you know from one of the local schools for some reason had been picked either for his sporting ability or something I can't, can't remember at all anyway 
Um, so it came by in a flash, vroom, and then they were gone. I was like, wow, we stood here for over half an hour to watch someone go by for 30 seconds. <laughs> here is the burnt ochre. We're going to put some darker areas on our tulips. Firstly, thinking about these little petals up here. So where um, the petals are just emerging from behind, we'll just put a layer of this there and do the same on all of them. So a bit darker near the bottom where there'd be a little bit of shadow. I feel like that. And the same on this one in here. So yes, it, but it's, you know, I still remember it. And then my friend went into, we were right by a shop, we were right by a Waitrose. And uh, my friend went in and bought a box of um, ice lollies for everyone, it was so hot. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the shady side of the street very sensibly we all um kids had hats and stuff um i don't know if we took them with us you know how you do when you're a mum and you collect your kids from school you take a hat or a mac or a brolly whatever the weather might be if it's changed since they went to school so we might have taken hats with us or they might have had them for school because you know need them for the playground anyway um but uh yeah it was uh, it was quite the experience and it was something that you know all the brought, brought all the town together i think i don't think i'd ever seen as many people in the town and of course that wasn't the only street that they went by we just happened to go to that street because it was just down the hill from the school and just everyone from the school just sort of piled down to there you know and luckily for me it was sort of really near to my house so when it was over we had a sort of 10 minute walk and we were home which was rather nice but obviously not the same for other people right now i'm going to go back in with my orange leg but i'm going to sharpen it where did i put my sharpener here it is because i want it well i want it sharper so here's my orange leg again and what we're going to do this time is we're going to work this color out from the edge to the tip and just try and fade as we go now to fade you just put less layers on i mean you can't really see a huge difference because we're so it's such a small space to work with and just making this bit darker now i know these outside petals look a bit scruffy well mine do yours might not but um, I'm going to come back and work those with a different colour in a minute. Not a completely different colour, but I'm going to use a lighter colour in there. So we're just going to work these to the edge. Oh, what time is it? Oh, I hit my boys on the bus. The um, train was cancelled this morning. It's his last exam. It's actually, um, I'm recording this early it is may the 24th and it's his last exam and uh, the train was cancelled of course and um, what was the excuse due to too many train um trains needing repairs at the same time that was the reasoning um so um he's had to get the bus but luckily because um of where he is there's buses every half an hour so he's hopped on the bus and uh, he probably won't be there he won't be there yet the bus was just before eight it's 20 past eight so um no he won't be there yet and the bus takes a lot longer than the train two and a half times longer it, and he doesn't really like it. there's no wi-fi on the bus it's all a bit yeah. it's loads cheaper but um now i want a light orange i'm going to go for the marigold whoops to do these outside petals Okay, this one's a bit blunt, but I think it'll be okay because all I'm really doing is trying to sort of burnish that colour down a little bit and I might add some darker colour to it after but I just want to tidy it up and make it a bit more solid, if you know what I mean. In fact, sharper pencil is better at achieving that. <clears throat> and then we'll um, see where we go from there with it. I'm going to put a bit of this lighter colour in the middle here too.
basically I'm just trying to put a sort of top layer over everything to get rid of more of that white paper that you can see through. There's nothing wrong with seeing white paper through, um, but I don't want quite this much, shall we? Now, I've been trying to create a little bit of three-dimensional look with this dark colour in here and lighter colour here, but it's not quite as I would like. Um, it's fine, but it's not as... It could be better, so we're going to use another colour after this to put in a bit more. I'm just going to do the tips of these down the middle as well as these outside petals. Seems to have stopped raining, so that's good. Husband was going to go out and do some sketching first thing, um, and uh, it was mizzling. When my boy went out, it was sort of just drizzle. But uh, it, it's got a bit harder. It stopped now. But he was going to go and sit on the um, canal, the lock um, gate handle thing. I don't know what you call them. And uh, do a bit of sketching. But of course it'd be all wet now. So that was his plan gone. But um, as I said, I think he's getting ready to go out to the shop to buy some milk. I told him he could take my other son with him. I said he needs a walk. Like a dog, you know. Woof. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, uh, it's good to get. Now the boys are finished. Well, you know, one they'll both be finished by the end of today. It's important for them to get out and have a walk. I think. Oops, miles out of the line there. Right. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is grab the orange lake, and I want to put a little bit of darker colour on the edge of each of these larger petals. I think they stand out as looking a bit different. Just a little bit. Yeah, I've gone out of the line, but you know. Maybe a bit along the bottom too there. I think that looks better. Compare, see what you think. You might think it's a bit of a, a bit over the top. It's up to you. And down um, this one. I feel like these are going to stand out more than anything else. So I want to just make sure they, you know, they have some depth of colour in them. So a bit at the bottom there and at the side. There we go. Now I'm going to put a bit more shadow in. Now this step you might not want to do. Um, now what colour shall I use? Now choosing your colour for shadow can be tricky. I'm going to use a burnt umber which is our sort of darkest brown. I just need to give it a sharpen. I feel like a brown shadow works better on an orange colour. So here it is. This one's getting quite short. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Just along the edge of our black line there just to make it look like this petal is creating a tad of shadow on the petal below like that and then I'm going to do the same thing on all of these smaller petals too Now down here, can you see we've got a line? I'm going to put a tiny bit on each side to make it look like that. It's just standing out a little bit as if it's some sort of um, vein on our flower. There we go. Now you can look at that compared to that and decide whether you think it's worth the effort of putting in this extra bit. It's just such a tiny bit anyway. It's not that tricky. And I think it just makes that bit of difference. Make sure you go right up to the black line. If you leave a little gap, it looks very strange. It, this, the idea of this is to sort of trick the eye to make it look more three-dimensional. And if you don't quite get it right, then you, the illusion is lost and the eye doesn't get tricked. I'm going to do a bit here as well, where we're looking slightly inside the curve of the petal there 
and then again either side of here, like that, then this one. And then I'm going to finish here. I know we haven't done the greenery of the tulip, but I think it feels to me like we're almost halfway through the page because we've sort of done one set of flowers and stems and one set of flowers and we've got another set of flowers and a stem and a set of stems if you know what I mean it just feels like it's a good place to finish and uh, I wanted to sort of make this a two day video so there we are there are our tulips I'm going to come out so you can see the whole page um, we haven't done the bow or anything yet, but I think that's okay for now. I want to go and see if my boy has messaged me as well to see how he's doing. He probably hasn't yet. But um, I will um, come back tomorrow and finish off um, the rest. So for today, thank you very much for watching. Um, hope you have a really super day. As I say, come back tomorrow. Please like, like subscribe and um, comment. It all really helps. Um, the channel and thank you to those that already show lots of support um, if you're a member of my channel there will be a compilation video of this and the next one already available so you don't have to wait till tomorrow but those who aren't members will just have to wait that extra day and uh, thank you to all my members for your support so uh, yes thank you have a super day and happy coloring <laughs>